Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to Everest Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to be doing something really cool that I've never done before. A friend out in Arizona, Jim Philippak, who I met at the Drew Blair School of Realism a few months ago, does something really cool that he incorporates his airbrush into. And he does metal art. So he contacted me and asked me if I was a sports fan, and I told him I was. I told him I was a Flyers fan. So next thing I know, in the mail, shows up this really cool metal art of a Flyers goalie mask. I'll pop you this information down below in case you want to get something really cool like this done. But today I'm going to be taking you through the process on how I'm going to airbrush this. And I'm going to be using a couple different products, which is going to be really cool. I'm going to be using Black Candy 2O, which I never used before. Of course, the 4050 is the carrier. Some opaque white and some pearl orange. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around. Consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. A thumbs up would be great. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps keeps us growing. Don't forget to check out all those Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start off by mixing the Candy 2O Black one-to-one -one with UVLS 4050 Clear. I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes. Before I do that, though, I just want to let you know I'm going to be spraying it through an airbrush, and that's why I'm mixing it up one-to-one. -one. If you watch any of my other videos on Candy 2O, you know that the mix for the spray gun is a little bit different. But when we're going through an airbrush, a 0.35 needle nozzle combination, we're going to mix it one-to-one. -one. I'm going to be using my Awada Eclipse HPCS to do this. Now I'm going to put at least three coats of candy onto this, and if you can see, Jim has all of the swirl marks in this particular piece, and I'm going to want those to show through. My goal is to be able to see those or have them show through for the end result. So let's get mixing one to one. I'll see you in a few minutes. Now we got our one-to-one -one mixed up. We're gonna let it set for 10 minutes. This is gonna be a great time to clean our surface. I'm gonna be taking a Doobie Color Automotive Prep, a foaming prep here. I'm gonna spray my surface down. I'm gonna get myself a nice terry cloth. This will take any dirt, grease, or anything like that especially on metal, can kind of get you know, greasy, depends on that. I don't know exactly what Jim cut this with. But you want to make sure your surface is nice and clean. Make sure it's also dry. And you can see what's on that terry cloth right there that came off of there. And you don't want to be painting over that. So you want to make sure it's clean. I'll actually wipe this down, give it another spray until I get a clean cloth. So here you go, nice and clean. Okay, so also my strategy here is, after I put the candy on, I'm going to clear it. Once I'm happy with the candy, I'm gonna clear it, I'm gonna lock that all in because I'm gonna to want to use some opaque white and I'm going to be using some pearl orange. And those colors would bleed, especially the white, the candy would bleed through if I don't lock it in with the clear. So let's load the gun up and let's get our three coats of candy on. The other thing I wanna note is between each coat of candy, I'm going to let it dry. You don't wanna be putting candy wet on wet. So I'm gonna spray one coat, come back probably in about 10, 15 minutes, spray another coat, so don't rush the process. Now normally I'd be up on the easel, but I have it laying down on the workbench here, so I get you nice and close up. So I put my lid on because I'm going to be spraying down, and I don't want to get any, you know, splashing around on it. If I jerk a little too much, it's going to put, you know, one big blob on there, I don't want that. I'm going to build these coats up. You're going to want to take it nice and slow, don't go too heavy too fast with it. You just want to get that first coat down 
nice and even about 50% overlap. And the first coat you're barely even going to be able to see. The other thing you might notice is I'm not at a total 90 degrees with this. You can be, but because I'm spraying down, I'm at a very sharp angle, but I'm not exactly 90 degrees to my surface. And that's okay doing something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And I will say that they're very thin coats, so they're not gonna take a long time to dry. But let that set up a little bit. There's some spots that I got on a little heavier than others. And I'm gonna want that to dry out. All right, so we're back with coat number two. Just to give you a reference, I have my cup about half full or maybe just below half full and that's what it was in the first one and it was all about empty when I was done there. The other thing uh, you heard me say was that some, you know, I got some heavy spots. I really only got one heavy spot here. So you just want to, you know, keep that in mind. It might be one a little bit right here. Keep that in mind so when you're doing the next coat, you don't build up. You can kind of stay away from that a little bit and you might, you know, miss over it. But again, remember that if that's heavier than everything else, it's going to even put more on it the second coat. So it's almost like three coats, right? Versus where something's not real heavy. So again, you want to try to keep it as even as possible. So just note that if you do get a heavy spot that you can just compensate for it on the preceding coat. The other thing, if you notice, air is on all the time. And I'm just using my trigger on off. As I go off the piece, you want to make sure your paint is falling all the way through off the piece before you trigger off. But this is where your cap really does come in handy. If I didn't have the cap on, I'd be spraying paint or spilling paint all over my project. I don't normally use the cap because I'm on the easel. All right, we'll come back. I think one more coat will do it. I think that's about where I'll want to be. All right. Well, there you have it. What's really cool about it, I still can see the swirl marks through the candy. Not quite sure how the camera's picking up on that with the light, but when I clear that, that's gonna really pop. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in a few hours. Just want that to be totally cured. I'm gonna put a clear on it. I'm not gonna use a 2K clear because this is gonna be exposed to the elements. So I'm just gonna use you know regular spray can, rattle can clear just to lock it in. You can use the UVLS clear to do this as well. I prefer just spray can clear. I just get that to go on much smoother. Again, I'm a big fan of this UVLS, but I'm a fan of it as a carrier for the Candy 2.0. It just absolutely works fantastic with the Candy 2.0. So I stick to that use for it. So again, I'll, once I put the clear on, I'll come back, I'll scuff it down. Then our surface will be all prepped and ready to mask it off to add our white and our orange. All right, so I got one coat of clear on here. It's not real heavy. I just wanted to lock it in. I am going to very lightly, because it's only one coat, I'm going to very lightly just take the scuff pad over it just to knock any kind of shine down so I get good adhesion. Now, there's something that you're going to notice here is that it's not all black anymore. I took some of the black off. And what I did was I got some Q-tips and I just put it or dipped it in the 4011 and ran it over the black and then wiped it off with a paper towel. And in some cases even wiped it back off with a clean Q-tip. The 4011 took it right off. So after I was done painting it all the candy black, when I looked at my reference, I realized that I didn't want everything to be all black. I wanted some silver to show through. The other part of airbrushing or art, as anybody who's been doing this a long time knows, is how do you overcome your mistakes? or how do you fix your mistakes? There's always usually a way to fix a mistake. Now, there are some catastrophic mistakes that you just can't fix, but there usually is a way to fix a mistake. In this case, the 4011 
did a really good job in just removing the paint and the Q-tips acted like a pencil or an eraser or an eraser pencil to help me get in and kind of just remove just the little bits of areas that I want to remove. All right, so again, just a light scuffing with that. Give it a good wipe down. Terry cloth, let's run some air over it. Blow any kind of dust that's off there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my my 12 inch transfer tape that I use for masking and I'm gonna tape this off and I'm gonna draw on my artwork and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut it out like a stencil. All right, I stepped ahead of here a little bit. I have this all masked off now, and I'm ready to spray my white. So I got my white loaded up in my Iwata Eclipse, and as you can see here, I have it all masked off. I use my transfer tape, and I actually hand cut these letters out. Now that takes a little bit of skill and practice. Uh, I do have a video on how to cut this type of masking. I'll pop a card up above for you, because I do use a lot of masking in situations like this. Under the Flyers logo, I got fine line tape. That's another technique for masking. And I have some fine line tape I'm gonna be running up in here as well, where I'm gonna have an orange and a white stripe. Let's get going putting our white in. And as you can see, you gotta be wearing a flyer shirt if you're gonna be painting a flyer's mask. Now you don't want to be building this up just like everything else too quick. Slow down on the process a little bit. Build it up in light coats. Always remember, too fast, too quick is no good. And just I'll lay down a light coat and I'll move to a different area. And it only takes a few minutes for it to dry, so by the time I come back to it, it's ready for another coat. Once I get that initial coat on, my next couple coats are actually just a little heavier each time. It'll go on a lot nicer once you have that fog coat down. I am using an opaque white here. And you can see the job that that clear coat's doing too because if I didn't have that clear coated, that would be bleeding right through. I'm going to be spraying this orange pearl. Now, it's not an opaque technically, so I don't really expect it to cover the black. So I may have to come in here with a white first and then with the orange. All right, so we got some orange pearl loaded up here in the gun. I will say it was the first time I opened it, you really got to shake these pearls up. I'm actually developing a paint shaker. I know there's a lot out there, but uh, I've been get a 3D printer lately and um, developing my own just for mixing up certain colors, just like this. I mean, you'll shake your arm off trying to shake those pearls up, especially if they've been sitting for a long time. And I got my white base on there, it's good and dry. Cap this. Again, like every other color, 
build it up slow. Don't rush it. Even dry it with a little air in between. You can just see like, if you're trying to build that up over black, you'd have a really hard time doing that. You could just bring it up to brilliant so much quicker. I, I don't even know if it's possible over black. I don't even, I wouldn't even try it. The only thing that I found that covers over black, you know, really decently is the opaques. And again, wicked colors, just a regular wicked line, not the opaque, are semi-transparent. But it would take you a lot to build it up. Tell you what though, I really am liking that pearl. Got a nice sparkle to it. All right, let's see what we got. There you are, check that out, super cool. I gotta clear this yet, but once I do, the pearl's gonna really pop. It's gonna look really, really cool in my shop. I'm gonna put some of Jim's artwork up here for you to see. If you are interested in any of his metal art, airbrushed or unairbrushed, again, I'm gonna pop Jim's information down below so you can contact him. This is just in time for hockey season. It's gonna be a great season. Go Flyers. Well, all right, there you have it. I didn't put the clear on it because if I did, it would just shine too much with the lights and you'd be having a hard time really seeing that. That came absolutely it was so cool. I really couldn't be happier with it. It's got some hangers on the back here so I can hang it up in my shop. Again, Jim's information is going to be down below. So if you care to purchase any of this type of art, whether again, you want it painted by him or paint it yourself, check his email out down below, reach out to him. Great guy. You love doing business with him. Couldn't be happier with this project. First time I ever used black candy. I really liked it, it came out great. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, you know the drill, consider subscribing, hit that bell, a couple comments, hit those links. It all helps out with the channel. We're growing and I really appreciate it. Let's go Flyers, looking for a great season. With that, we'll see you in the next video.